Hello, this is Angelica Yingst, and you're listening to Centered, grounded conversations about the metaphysical. Today's conversation is my second conversation with Kira Pauls. When I envisioned Centered, I really wanted to have ongoing conversations with people in my life, especially piggybacking off our first conversation. Kira is a tarot reader, a social worker, a therapist with training in archetypal analysis from a Jungian perspective. She is a shadow retrieval facilitator, a yoga teacher, and a massage therapist. And she's a practicing witch and druid. So Kira and I love talking about tarot and witchery and all kinds of things. We have similar criticisms, and that's always fun. Um, in this episode, and probably quite a few episodes, we're going to be talking about the tarot. We talked about the quote-unquote dark cards of the tarot in episode two, and that was totally spontaneous. We didn't intend on talking about that, but ended up kind of venturing into that. And I thought it would be interesting to have a deeper conversation about that because it's one of the more challenging ways to teach tarot is to talk about the dark cards and also help our students be positive and productive with their clients uh, reading tarot. So we just took on the dark and challenging cards of the major arcana of the writer Waite Smith tarot deck. And I call them the gatekeepers of the shadow. Whether that's an apt title, we'll, we'll find out. <laughs> we started with the hangman and went to the tower discussing their imagery and meaning. We laugh a lot in this episode. You can find Kira online at awintaro.com. I hope you enjoy my conversation with Kira Pauls. Maybe where we should start is like the first challenging card in the major arcana, which is what the, the hangman. Yeah, I think that's a good place to start. Because it's an, in, I mean, it's funny because, I, I mean, I find the hierophant challenging. <laughs> I find, yeah. I sometimes find the chariot challenging. And then, of course, strength reverse can be challenging. But this is like the right and proper challenging card, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's the one that, like, you see and it's like... <clears throat> A little bit. Yeah, people always ask <laughs> like that. I think that's the kind of card that when you're a tarot reader, you I don't think of it as a challenging card. Right. Yeah. But when pe when I do readings for people, they're usually shocked by this card. Yeah, they react to it. They're like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna be hung. Um which that part's really interesting. Yeah. Like why exactly. doesn't it say the hung man? I mean, <laughs> uh -oh. beyond beyond the obvious. <laughs> <laughs> the well hung man no the hanged man is like the i was like look, looking this up and it was like the only time hanged is used is when someone's being executed right yeah it's like you've been hanged she was yeah. hanged yeah <laughs> i like the hung man <laughs> I i'm not gonna like he does have quite a package if you look at it on there. He does. He really does. No. <laughs> oh. But then I was looking up like, well, so where do you get hung upside down? Right. Usually right. you're hung by the neck. Right. You're hung by the neck. But then yeah. when I was Googling it, it said in Italy, traders were hung upside down. Oh, okay. Like Mussolini was hung upside down when he was overthrown. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, and his wife. Wow, I didn't know that. That is so interesting. Fascists are hung upside down. Fascists are upside down. Well, then I don't know if I feel bad for this thing. No, I know exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's interesting to think of him as a traitor because we're coming off of justice, but we're like on a spiritual journey, right? Right. So where are you committing treason against? Yourself? Right. right. Well, yeah. And I mean, I, you know, it's funny that you say that because the way that I tend to see the hangman is like with um, Odin. Oh, yeah. Um, Tell me about that. I don't know. Yeah. Anything. So Odin um, hung himself upside down from Yggdrasil, the tree. Oh, okay. 
Um, and he hung himself upside down and he was there for like nine days and nine nights. Um, and during that time he like floated in and out of consciousness, which I guess is why the hanged man is associated with Neptune. Interesting. Um, yeah. Yeah. And when he was in that position, um, he basically said, nope, no one can help me. No one can help me. Like people wanted to help him, like give him water or something. And he was like, nope, no one can help me. So it's like that whole martyr, right. <laughs> martyr complex. But when he was there, that's when he discovered the knowledge of the runes. <gasps> yeah. That's so interesting. Cause he's basically yeah. hanging on the tree of life. Like that's how yeah. I learned this one yeah that is so fascinating well it's funny that you say about like betraying yourself in a way because i mean ultimately that that was his goal but we know that the hanged man like also carries with it themes about like martyring yourself sometimes so it's like you can see that even in that myth yeah absolutely and uh rachel pollock i think she says this card's all about social conformity which is a funny one because I'm like, really? Yeah. I have never really used huh. it that way, but I love that interpretation that yeah, we have to that's... see things from a different point of view. Yeah. Because if we're looking at it the same way, then we'll never expand our consciousness. Yeah. That's interesting. Which I always think this is really what this card's about expanding consciousness, right? Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> definitely and and yeah that whole like shifting your perspective like when i see this as coming up in like an advice position or something i do usually see that as like you know seeing things from a a 180 (laughs) kind of view like looking at it from a completely different perspective in order to expand your concept of it yeah and it's interesting because like most of the time when people get it they flip it because they think it's, you know, like new, yeah, new I know. students are like, oh, it's upside down. Like, nope, that one was actually supposed to be upside down. Yeah. Yeah. But when you flip it, it looks like the world. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's an interesting concept. Mm-hmm. Because when I read it reversed, I always think that it's someone who's gone through looking at it from different perspectives and kind mm-hmm. of come back to trusting themselves and their initial it's almost validating like your initial feeling about it absolutely but then you know 12 and 21 are basically up and down you know what i mean up and down yeah exactly yeah 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 and she consciously does that did that stuff i think she did i totally think she did i think that she was quite a mystic she was right like i can't i don't know i mean thinking about her doing that basically she started the cards may and finished them in november i know (laughs) i can't even oh my gosh it's hard that's why i think like so much of it was channeled because how much conscious could come out during that time you couldn't think about any one card too long no and 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 yeah, and she wasn't even the one who was the mystic. And it's like, you know, the records basically show, like, I don't think she and Arthur Waite were really communicating that much. No, he, he like, wasn't really even allowed to tell her anything because yeah, his, like, his access was higher than hers. Yeah. And, and medic order. <laughs> from what I know, it's like he helped with like the majors somewhat yeah like with the minors like not really like that's just all her genius yeah because well (laughs) there was no pips that were drawn before her yeah she's the first one to really do that yeah i mean she's just incredible absolutely i want there to be a biography on her that would be amazing as a queer mixed race she was both English and American. Mm-hmm. She was like an outlier that could kind of walk between worlds, which is amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So anyway, the hangman is a, it's one of those cards. It's funny because I'm one of the people that hates this card. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, I like it, like the, the, 
I like the image of it to like meditate on it, but I, I don't like pulling it in a reading because I'm like, great. Yeah, I know. Like, I know. Like, I know. And I, consciousness. <laughs> yeah, and I think that I think partially, like, you're not really supposed to understand it. Right. Yeah, it's one of those cards that it's like, you know, sometimes it comes up in like, you know, an outcome or something where it's like you just need to let go and see what's going to happen. Yeah. Um. And so it's like it's like the non-answer answer card. Yeah. Then that like the hangman just moves right into death, which of course, yeah right into death and it's like the start of all the difficulties <laughs> yeah what do you make of that though i mean not to keep referencing rachel pollock but she you know splits the majors into three groups mm -hmm. which is basically the id oh how does she do it is it the id the ego and the super ego i can't remember how she does it but it's like basically the first part the first seven are you like going yeah. through life just getting your needs met and then the second is the beginning of the spiritual journey and then the super yeah that makes life. sense that she would do it that way yeah yeah i like it but i also like when we start getting into these harder cards mm -hmm. for people it's hard to explain that kind of stuff like mm -hmm. oh this part of your journey is the hard part but it's also the spiritual part you know, right <laughs> Like, She's oh, like, oh, yay. I just lost my job. <laughs> How right. is that? That feels more basic to me, you know. Exactly. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Like, my clients will say that, but yeah. death is, I mean, death is a card I pulled this month for our, for my like monthly reading. Oh, yeah. And I kind of quoted us a lot, <laughs> basically talking about how we talked about this in the last time we, we talked about how death is really a death and yes you have to go through it but it's the moment before and the moment after too that are important and i think that's what people focus on many weeks after the death or many months after the death not exactly. the actual death part yeah yeah and yeah i know that last time we had talked a lot about the death card so it's like you know it is a transformative moment but it's also like you know i think we have talked about how a lot of people use that to kind of bypass yeah just processing the death so it's it's a complicated card to explain in that in that way yeah and you know it's funny because when you mentioned the id ego and super ego thing yeah i completely like i wasn't even thinking about it when we were talking about the cards because the hanged man is the one that i always forget about but like a lot of times um, I'll talk about the cards in terms of like shadow and things like that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I usually find that like the hanged man is like the point where we start to actually experience some of the, the shadow parts of ourselves. Yep. There's some awareness of it at like the high priestess point kind of. Yeah. But the, the hanged man is where we really start to like encounter it, um, feel it a little bit. We become like yeah. more aware of it. And then like the devil, of course, like takes it a step further. <laughs> I love the devil. You know what it is though too about that is that the high priest is like is such a metaphor for when you start opening up psychically or spiritually where it's like, you go and you have some mystical experience or some psychic tells you you're psychic or you're yeah. intuitive and you're like, oh, it's so amazing. And I, you know, I'm going to be like the high priestess and everybody uses the high priestess as their, you know, significator. And it's, yeah, like, of course. Oh, that's totally me. Yeah. That's so me. And then you get so to me. this point and you're like, I don't want this fucking spiritual journey anymore. This sucks. You know, exactly. like, now I got to do real work now yeah. you gotta deal with it yeah well and you know i think it is funny that you say that like that because when you think about it like how many spiritual people do you know and this probably applies to you i know it applies to me where it's like you were that person at one point and you're like mm -hmm. la -da 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 -da, this is so great and then you really do have something that just like flips your perspective completely yeah. upside down and you're like what the 
freak is going on? Like you're not quite to a crisis point, but you're like, what on earth is going on? This is not what I thought. Yeah. I, I mean, for me, I like, I remember literally setting an intention. Like I want my third eye to open and, and doing a whole, a <laughs> yes. whole ritual of it. Yes. It was on yeah. the blue moon in 2012. I mean, I was already a card reader for many years, but yeah, I just wanted to be that like teacher, high priestess kind of thing. Uh-huh. And after I set that intention, I lo- I felt like I lost all my abilities. And right. I got super sick. Yeah. Like really physically ill. Yes, yes. And then I had to go to the doctor and then I went to a nutritionist and found out I had celiac disease and I couldn't eat wheat and all of this shit happen. I mean, it was really devastating. Wow. And then yeah. like month three, this is why I always do my medicine bundles for three months because I kind of feel like then you're ready to settle into actually your intention. Like you're just getting rid of stuff that's standing in the way of your intention at that point before that, you know? Yeah. And then month three, I was at a meditation. I closed my eyes and it was like everything the person was saying in the guided meditation I was seeing like two steps before she said it wow and I was like oh my gosh I guess my third eye actually opened but I had to get rid of all this stuff that was in the way but ah, you know what you're just you just described the hanged man yes exactly it's like you know um when I had written a story about the hanged man, I made special note of like, you know, when he hangs himself upside down, like all the money from his pockets like falls out. Yeah. Everything falls out of his pockets when he's upside down. I love that. <laughs> That's so interesting. I've always been curious about that. Like yeah. there are different representations of him in different decks mm-hmm. to where you can actually see stuff falling from him yeah that's true but this one like in the writer weight smith deck his skirt isn't even falling is it a skirt yeah (laughs) his his skirt i mean it kind of is like does is he wearing a jumper like how is it not coming up right yeah because if this was a skirt sort of thing or like a long tunic tunic, it would totally be like riding up yeah exactly and his skirt probably wouldn't even be like totally on and probably be like (laughs) hanging off him a little (laughs) i feel like we're gonna keep coming back to him (laughs) i know (laughs) it's like because i don't even like him but it's i don't like him because he's a very complex card and it's like you pull that card and you're like number one where do i begin number two do i even bother because the message is you don't know you can't know just like just let it go (laughs) And it's all turned around. I mean, like the colors are even turned around. Like the red's yeah. on top and the blue's on the bottom. Right. I feel like death is, you know, um, okay, we get it. Death, you're dying. But it is interesting, like all the figures on that. Do you always make it out to be like, that's the Hierophant and that's the Emperor and that's the Empress? Do you think of it that way when you look at that? Um, yeah. And death. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I like kind of like yes and no. Yeah, I, I kind of do see it that way. Like, I definitely take special notice to the fact that we have, like, a king here and we have, like, a bishop um, begging for his life. And I always see it as, you know, like, the we're all familiar with that kind of, like, <laughs> archetype, yeah. I guess, where it's like, oh, please, I'm too holy yeah. for death. Yeah, the guy that's you preaching that, that you, you're not supposed to be afraid. And then he's right. begging. He's like, please, 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 no. Please, no, don't kill me. Whereas the child is like the bravest one. Yeah. And who knows what the heck's going on with the mama. She's not yeah. looking at him. She just doesn't even want to acknowledge it. Yeah. But yeah, it's like she's the different... Karen. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god she is she's She's like what death i don't see death (laughs) (laughs) you need to get out of here death or i'm gonna call the cops (laughs) do you know who my daddy is (laughs) i need to speak with the manager with your manager death I was like, hello, I'm here. You'll see me in the judgment card, lady. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She'll see him then. <laughs> 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 uh, 
but yeah it's like i mean i do see this as like the different reactions to death like um the one time i had drawn this card and it it was like really kind of pronounced for me in my life where um i was i was teaching like these um prevention education classes around sex ed and uh, healthy relationships and stuff like that and an alternative education school so these were kids who had a lot of you know problems at home and whatever and um the school systems had decided that they needed like disciplinary action um and anyway one of the boys in the class um had ended up accidentally um suiciding with a gun and it was it was an accident it was playing around and i had pulled the death card then and my eyes went directly to the child and i was like you know it it really added a new meaning for me because then i started to see it as like kind of the different ways we handle death like some of us beg like please no it can't happen to me mm-hmm. and then some of us just do die <laughs> you know sometimes without, some us, without the knowledge that it's coming right right some of us yeah. just drop dead some of us don't want to look at it and then there's you know the young innocent ones who think that it can't touch them yep and so they're just there like offering death the flower like hey i love that it's so interesting to look at the backgrounds of these cards and you know i think a lot of tarot readers focus on the fact the sun's coming up right but is it but is it right or is it going down is it going down because the 10 i'm going to pull out the 10 of swords here because that's another one where there's like this new dawn happening Mm -hmm. that one doesn't have a sun at all really it's just that sun on the horizon yeah because i kind of think it might be going down especially what comes after right well and then like not too long later like we get to the moon and the moon is up kind of yeah. between those towers so right and they're yeah exactly so the we same. could assume maybe yeah the moon is that it's setting not not rising mm-hmm. yeah that changes it right it does it do you does. think we have a do you think that tarot readers have a tendency to focus on the positive too much <laughs> yeah I mean, I think, well, it's like, it's funny because I I do know a lot of tarot readers who definitely don't go in that direction. And they're kind of the people who I consider to be like tarot reader, tarot readers, right? But then there's the, you know, there's, there's people who, and there's nothing wrong with this, but they sometimes maybe have like a slightly different focus um, normally, but they also use tarot. Yeah. Um, and so, like, I think that a lot of times the people who are like, tarot is my thing, a lot of times they do understand that there are dark cards and there are dark parts of life. And that's part of why they were attracted to it, Yeah, <laughs> maybe. But I do think that, you know, when tarot, I mean, tarot was always a thing amongst new agey metaphysical types. Yeah. But when oracle cards started to become really popular, then it was like, tarot has to somehow compete with it. And the oracle cards make us all feel so good. And tarot doesn't make us feel so good. Yeah. So it's like, <laughs> I think yeah. it started to like really change then. It's like, um, I agree. Yeah. But I, you know, I struggle as a tarot teacher because I've had students that are really negative. Yeah. And then I say, you know, try to find something positive to say in this reading. Like, right. <laughs> give them actual work. It's not faded. I really try to emphasize that point that we aren't locking someone to a fate they can't change, you know? Yeah. Um, and in that way, like, focus on, you know, something that's positive. So when you get like <laughs> the 10, the, the Ten of Swords, the Death Card, the Tower, and they're all in the same reading, it can be a little challenging, you know? So we look at stuff like that and say like, yeah, there's sun coming up, you know? Exactly, and, yeah. Well, and yeah, I and, and I think that like the, the challenging cards, like, you know, it's like you pull one of those and you're like, oh shoot, what do I have to say about this yeah. other than bad things? But all of them have some kind of advice yeah with them. Mm-hmm. um you know and i mean that's what the good cards too every single card 
um, can have advice to give you. And challenges, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I always find it weird that death goes into temperance. I was actually talking with my tarot students about that because like with temperance, um, teetering between death and the devil. Yeah. Poor temperance there. But at the same time, it makes a lot of sense because it's like when you're in that, when you're between death and the devil is when you need temperance. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, it's a choice. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Finding that, that inner peace amongst mm -hmm. all the external chaos. Yeah. Then you kind of have to have like, it's kind of like the devil on each shoulder, right? Yeah, Friends exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it's, though. it's funny too, because like with temperance being, um, number 14, um, and I'm, so my, my life path is like a 14-5. And I remember when I was first learning numerology and we were talking mm. about like karmic numbers. Yeah. The, the 14 deals a lot with like addictions and yeah. um, heightened sensitivity and things like that. And so it's like having temperance teetering, like you said, between those two things and having the devil on each shoulder makes so much sense for what temperance is. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I, I always use it as a sobriety card Yes, definitely. too, but it goes further than that. Absolutely. What did it mean in the 19th century? I mean, when, when, when did the temperance movement start? Was it around that time when prohibition happened in the United States? That must have been like in the 30s, right? Or the 20s? Yeah, it began in the early 18th hundreds but the legislation when there were actually like some successes with legislation yeah that was like in the 1910s so yeah yeah and then the decline was in like the 20s um until the 60s so yeah it, uh, this is like around that time when it was kind of like probably at its most controversial peak because it it would have been just about to yeah. decline Right, because it's like 1910, these were public. Yeah, and so if it started declining around 1920. Interesting. I'm just looking up to see if she's got anything. She doesn't really talk about it. She just says it's one of her least favorite cards, <laughs> Rachel Pollock, which I agree with. I mean, it's just because there isn't much there yeah. in terms of like, well, it's almost like, do the right thing, kids. Right. No. <laughs> it's just sort of like, well, right. yeah, if I could do that, I wouldn't be asking the tarot anything yeah, about those... my journey. Those fives in the uh, in the major arcana. <laughs> yes, right. The right thing, kids. <laughs> You're a fan. Leave yourself. Yeah, exactly. There's a lot of like springy feeling to it too. Yeah. Which also feels easy, you know. But yeah, that's the that's the myth. That's the that's the shadow of this. Is that it looks really easy. All you have to do is do the right thing and be emotionally balanced, but it's about as helpful as telling someone, just be balanced. Exactly. Don't stress like, out. It's like talking to somebody with anxiety and saying like, you just need to relax. It's like, mm -hmm. if I could do that, I wouldn't have anxiety, idiot. You know? Right. Well, yeah, I mean, it's funny you say that. I was just talking to a friend of mine about the failures of cognitive behavioral therapy. Yeah. And that's one of them that I say. It's like, oh, okay, yeah, we can just rationalize our way out of it. Yeah. And that's going to fix the problem. But insurance says it will. So yeah. it keeps people coming back and spending money. But yeah. <laughs> oh, I know. We were, yeah. I just was like following a Twitter thread where someone tells Roxanne Gay, you know, the writer or something mm -hmm. like, just eat less and move more or something. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, thanks. I hadn't thought about that. You know? Yeah. I never considered it. What a great idea. Yeah. And I was like, I put on that thread something about like when I went to the doctor and I was like, you know, I'm, I'm really struggling to lose weight. And he was like, well, have you ever heard of a calorie? I'm like, I'm not, <laughs> at, at that point I was 42. I was like, I'm a 42 year old woman. Like I've literally been trying to lose weight since I was 105 pounds. Right. Like, <laughs> of course oh. I've heard of a calorie. And then oh he like, God, he, he like started mansplaining weight loss and it was just like oh, oh my god, my god. <laughs> really but that's kind of how i feel about this that's card temperance yeah i mean i i have sometimes been able to find more 
helpful advice in the hero font than I have in temperance. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> the hero font can be like, Oh, find a cool group to hang out with or like yes. seek wise counsel. <laughs> Whereas temperance, it's like, don't eat too much. Don't drink too much. That's don't smoke about, too much. It's all about balance right now for you. Like you can smoke your weed, but don't smoke too much. And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> the useful part of it is that it's always an indication like when it's reversed or when I have it around some other cards like the devil or some of the other cards that I'm like, okay, this is addiction, you know? Right. We're yeah. Like with addiction and recovery. Yeah. It can let so. you know, like, Hey, you know, I think that you're, you're actually really struggling with an addiction issue. Yeah. yeah. Which then of course, I mean, I guess the devil illuminates that further. I know. <laughs> I mean, it's the, de the devil being kind of the next in line. I think it's such an interesting card, especially because all these angel cards are kind of like the angels in front presiding mm -hmm. over everything. What temperance is presiding over is like two cups, you know? Yeah. Not two people, two yeah. emotions, you know, some kind. But then the devil comes in. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah, that devil. <laughs> yeah. Poor lovers all chained up now. <laughs> I know, and wearing red curly wigs. Or... Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, what the freak is that about? Why do they have to have red curly hair now? Excuse me. <laughs> I, I mean, the way I've always thought of it is that that that's how Judas is described in the Bible. Red curly hair? I think so. I'm really offended. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Kira. Not you. I mean, actually, it doesn't really surprise me. But yeah. <laughs> that's But funny. I don't know. I don't know if that's How really would Judas there. have red curly hair? Come on. <laughs> you know, there's red-headed Jews. Red-headed red brown, brown yeah. Jews? <laughs> No, they weren't brown. Am I the only one who notices that? <laughs> no, you're not. You're definitely not. I mean, they're naked, but they're not covering themselves. So, you know, it's weird because I'm trying to look up like red hair and there's barely anyone talking about it. Okay. Well, this person says it's just some random website, tarotreader.com. They both have tails, horns, and curly red hair, a sign of lust and taking on the devil's traits. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I had no idea that my hair was so lusty. It definitely <laughs> is. Taking on the devil's traits. You know, actually one time when I was in high school, there were these boys acting really weird on the back of the bus. They yeah. were like, and they were seniors or something. And I was a freshman and they're like, Hey, I like your curly hair. And then they're like, the devil has curly hair. Really? <laughs> Did you know that? And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so apparently these high school boys knew this. Oh my gosh. That's so funny. <laughs> the devil had curly hair like me. Oh my gosh. Okay. It's I'm, I just found this. I don't know if this matters at all, but the myth and history of red hair. And <laughs> this says the idea that redheads embody a certain otherness is something that can be seen almost from the beginning of recorded history, which is an interesting because Esau and King David were both redheaded. Um, some people even suspect, suspect the mark of Cain to actually be red hair. Isn't that interesting? Wow. <laughs> that is okay. So I guess that's why they suddenly now have well, wait, let me find the lovers. Because I'm like, wait, I'm yeah. blanking on what their hair was like then. She has long blonde hair, I think. Oh, of course, yeah. So when she has long blonde hair, she's pure. Yeah. <laughs> and then it turns red and curly. Well, that's better than some other options. But it, it doesn't look chosen. that bad. <laughs> it doesn't look that. Yes, exactly. Oh. It says Judas's hair is red. Okay. Yeah, she has long blonde hair and he has like kind of curly strawberry. And of Cain. Blonde hair. Cain also has red hair. Mm. Red hair used to be the mark of witchcraft on this. Like witches were seen to have red hair. Yeah. And the Celts in Western Europe whose traditions were steeped in magic had red, red flame colored hair and they be, believe that contributed to their powers and strength. Hmm. That's cool. Many Christians in the 16th to 18th centuries believe that redheads 
were affiliated with the devil and satanic practices and that more redheads were killed in the in the witch trials oh boy okay maybe we should move off that but that's fascinating all right so the redheaded kinksters here (laughs) (laughs) the redheaded kinksters I mean, yeah, I, this yeah. is a kinky card. Like, if you, I see it that way sometimes. Mm-hmm. I don't see it as being all bad all the time. Like when I get the hierophant reverse and the devil together, I always see non-traditional relationships. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, definitely. Like subdom stuff. Yeah, I mean the the devil's definitely a kinky one. <laughs> the fun one. Yeah, he's he's fun. He can be fun. I mean, well, what was that? thing you have a uh, hero font thing <laughs> i like a i was saying figure. about like the the emperor thing and then you had like a hero font thing i just i <laughs> have traditionally <laughs> been attracted to people in power yeah not people in power right now though i mean that's some, that's some shadow stuff there definitely it definitely, definitely is yeah it's a weird it's a weird thing. I mean, I've very rarely acted on it. You know what I mean? But it's just one of those things. Like, I can't deny that I like cops, people in power, you know? <laughs> Cop. like, okay, here's the question. <laughs> You're hiring a stripper for yourself. What does he come dressed as? Good question. Wow. Because, you know, they come usually, like, as an archetype, right? They're either the soldier, the cop the whatever (laughs) the cowboy okay well what's yours while i think i mean i probably a cop a cop i don't know though i like men i guess see like mine (laughs) mine is funny because i mean what what i historically have been into is and i i shared this in one of my um young in classes yeah i said that that my anima uh-huh. Or my animus, sorry, my animus is like Jeff Buckley or Kurt Cobain. Aww, <laughs> like that's like the, so I don't know how I would get a stripper to be that. Like you'd have to like come in and like be really moody and like sing <laughs> songs <laughs> and like brood for a while. Possibly have a heroin addiction. Yeah, and like kind of give me the cold shoulder a little bit. Like <laughs> oh, I know, right? <laughs> rejection. Yeah, reject me a little and then <laughs> and then strip for me. <laughs> anyway, the devil. <laughs> we basically why does he have chicken legs? I don't understand why he has chicken legs. That is really creepy and weird, especially because his upper legs are like hairy, like a like a fawn, but then he has like chicken feet. Yeah, like he's supposed to be pan, and then he turns into something chicken else. Feet. Maybe it's just because he has to grip. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were above him. They were is that how you say it? If they were hooved, they wouldn't Yeah. <laughs> he needs to stay up there somehow. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe like, is he is he like a griffin down below? <laughs> like I maybe. was thinking, maybe what is would, the griffin? It's the head of a a lion, lion. and then the body of like birds Goat? sort of thing. Oh yeah, the the eagle. Eagle. Yeah eagle but he's definitely got a dad bod i mean he's like he does he's <laughs> he does have a dad bod <laughs> oh he does he does that actually makes him way less terrifying yes i know <laughs> it's like oh he's just some weird dude with weird feet and a dad bod <laughs> He's like grumpy, like, get off my yard. Get out of my yeah, yard. Exactly. So, I mean, that kind of is what the devil is. You think he's this big, scary monster and he's just, you know. Ineffectual. Yeah. <laughs> Ineffectual. <laughs> That's such a Capricorn thing to say. It's like, it's like, you're ineffective. Like, you're not really. Working. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, and he's a Capricorn. <laughs> I know. I don't like that. That's I don't like that. Yeah. But the truth is, the idea of the reverse pentagram. Mm-hmm. This is a pen. I guess pentagram. Pentagram. Yeah. yeah. Of putting, you know, material stuff above your spirit. That is kind of a shadow of Capricorn. 
absolutely yeah it is yeah um it's funny because i usually talk a lot of shit on capricorns <laughs> have i changed your mind at all oh you have you have absolutely <laughs> um but it's it's funny because like my mom is a pisces sun with a capricorn moon oh yikes the and uh, <laughs> no, I'm just gay. I mean, she, but um, but no, the the Capricorn thing. Like, I, I feel like primarily when I was growing up, my experience of her was much more Capricorn um, than Pisces. Yeah. And, and that's just kind of the the energy I associate. It's very much about like, um, what have you achieved? What have you achieved? And yeah, and, and it's very driven, but it's also it's 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 too harsh sometimes. I yeah I that is the Capricorn but yeah it's shadow. like yeah Capricorn and, and Saturn it's like you know they can have this amazing like uh, responsible grounded hardworking mm-hmm. energy but then yeah it can it can be taken to extremes yeah I mean yeah you know, I think that's with any of the Earth signs honestly it's like I mean Virgo can go into extreme perfectionism and Taurus yeah. can go into extreme hedonism and <laughs> I mean, Capricorns tend to hang out with other Capricorns. Like, there's yeah. not many people that can tolerate Capricorns, and they do get a bad <laughs> rap. <laughs> I remember being in like Sage Goddess's first magical sabbatical, and she always shit talked Capricorns like constantly. Oh. And there were so many of us in her group too, and she That's would just so like talk funny. about how awful they are, and they're always complaining and blah blah blah. And I was like, if I complain about this. Am I a Capricorn then? <laughs> Am I a Capricorn if I complain about the amount of complaining? <laughs> Is this a real about? complaint or a Capricorn complaint? <laughs> yes, right. And then I, I mean, honestly, like, it is, it, you know, Capricorns are hard. So yeah. I don't know how we got off on that. <laughs> it's because we're talking about the devil and the devil the can't devil keep us focused. Like. Capricorn, yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. Should I don't we know. talk about the tower? Yeah. Let's talk about the tower. <laughs> I've been like consciously working with the tower for so long because I I had it as a personal year card two years ago and then I was just like yeah bring that shit down I'm I'm ready for everything (laughs) but I and then you made it happen in the whole world thanks a lot (laughs) (laughs) thank Kali not me (laughs) (laughs) well we needed it (laughs) yeah the tower is like such an interesting one. When it you is. teach it, do you teach it as an unexpected change? Um, usually, yeah. I usually say it's probably going to be unexpected. It's yeah you know, out of the sky. Though, I mean, a lot of times too, though, I also find that it's like, it. sometimes when I've had those like real situations where it's been like that, it's like on one hand, like consciously was it unexpected? Yes subconsciously not always like you know because it's dealing with like that that foundation that isn't solid sometimes you are on some level aware of some of the cracks in the foundation absolutely Um, but you might not be consciously aware yeah it's like complaining about wanting to leave your job for years and then you get fired and you're like I can't believe they fired me from that job. You know? Yeah. And I, I feel like that's sometimes why with the tower, like when I've had those moments, I almost feel like, like my body is not that in shock. Yeah. But my brain is, my brain's like, what the, <laughs> right. <laughs> what the, but the rest of me is like, yeah, this was par for the course. <laughs> yeah. I think that's a really interesting thing to bring up though, because it's so the ego attachment to it is mm-hmm. the issue, right? Rather than the somatic attachment. Exactly. Yeah. Because sometimes with the devil, like you really do feel that down into your bones. Like you, mm-hmm. it, it makes you shake from like within. But the tower is kind of like the stuff happening around you. Yeah. Um, but I'm a really good in crises usually. Yeah, I know. Me too. I'm like, maybe it's just that. Maybe I'm not speaking for everyone. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, because I think a lot of people get afraid when they get this card. Even tarot readers get afraid. Because... Oh my gosh. I don't like to pull it. No, because it's hard to tell somebody. 
Oh, you have to oh. prepare for something that you're not going to be able to prepare for. And I sure as heck don't want to get it for myself because I'm going to be like, what, what, what's going to happen? I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, exactly. <laughs> well, I will say in a positive way, kind of, that um, this card, like at a, a more literal way, I guess, I have seen it to mean uh, talking about explosive orgasms. <gasps> oh, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> Just kind of the imagery of the tower. I mean, it totally it looks like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Actually, what is the uh, association with this card? I forget. Is there a planetary? Um, I, I mean, know it off the top. I, I should know it off the top. Of I feel like maybe Uranus or... Probably. Something that is basically meaningless to you. <laughs> right. Right, essentially. I don't know um, if it'll have it in here. What is this? I can totally find it. Mm. I often see oh, the tower as a prison. You know that? Like I, I Oh I, yeah. Well and you know the the tower have you ever worked with Lenormand cards? No. Um, but in Lenormand cards, um, they're fortune telling ones. There's like 36 cards total, so it's just a small deck. But um, anytime you pull their tower, it actually is talking about institutions, schools, and prisons. Interesting. Um, yeah, specifically like prisons. That's what it looks like. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, yeah. It looks like a prison. prison yeah i um, always think it's like prisons of our own making i like we, the thing that we built around us to protect us is yeah. now our prison so the tower is mars oh interesting i thought maybe it would be uranus but the fool is actually associated with uranus huh. yeah yeah so it's Mars and, and fire. Oh. There's, I mean, there's a lot of fire in this card. Yeah, and the solar plexus. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, it deals with powerlessness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's like the, you know, it's like you don't want to say blessing in disguise because sometimes the, the tower is traumatic, but, you know, the thing about it is that whatever we thought was the solid tower is not right actually that um it was a lie yeah and it to me is the card of impermanence like hey yeah everything that you thought would never change is about to change exactly like, yeah that's uh i i don't like pulling that card ever no, i feel like with client hard one it's like, a hard one to talk about yeah with clients sometimes usually intuitively i can kind of feel a little bit i'm like okay like i I can talk about this, but then when you, when you read for yourself and you get it, you're like, Whoa! <laughs> yes, everything's falling apart. <laughs> I mean, to come from the devil into the tower to me, you know, is really makes a lot of sense, right? Because mm -hmm. you have these attachments right. to things that are unhealthy. We attach ourselves obsessively to things. And I, I mean, I, with the devil, which we didn't, we kind of talked about with the BDSM, you know, that can be a conscious important thing like playing with power dynamics mm -hmm. or it can just be like being completely powerless you know and, right. and being controlled by something that you don't want to be controlled mm -hmm. by but not yeah. even seeing it like being in an obsessive relationship or i i used to do readings for a friend of mine and and we got this a lot when she was in a relationship with someone that was you know non-ethical non-monogamy yeah and yeah. she was kind of obsessed with it you know like that the person she was in that relationship with which i didn't necessarily think was a bad thing but the whole secret keeping the whole non-ethical part of it was the hard part you know so once the tower came in which was like exploding everything to make this known it's not like that was easy for her. That was 
terrible. And now that she reflects on it, she can see the power dynamics not being, of, of being really screwed up and, and effed up to begin with. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it's like, you know, it's, you get with like addictions and stuff like that. I've even gotten it with like, when people have a lot of like credit card debt. Oh yeah. Uh, just like, yeah. Anything yeah. that's shame, like anything that has shame around it. Yeah. Yeah. That's being hidden seems to come up with the devil. And then the tower really is when we're like, that shit has to go flying out the window and everybody's exactly. going to see it. Well, I don't know if we want to keep going. I mean, we could, but I, I like the middle that we're talking about, the 12, yeah. 14, 15, 16, because then we start to get into like the sun, the moon, the stars, you know, basically. And I feel like that's, that's a whole thing in and of itself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So Cause once could... you get into that, then you're like dealing with, astrology your moon your sun you know kind of talking about different aspects yeah um then what this really is is like these are the the gatekeepers of the shadow work in my opinion starting with the hangman does that make sense definitely definitely thanks kira this was so much fun yeah thanks andy talk soon Thanks for listening to Centered with me, Angie Yinkst. If you'd like to send me a question or comment about this show or any shows, you can send them to angie at themoonandstone.com. <laughs>